Good morning. Hello, Facebook. Good morning, Facebook. November 19th, Chef Marcus Giuliano here from Aroma Time Bistro in Ellenville. And uh, thank you, everybody who's tuning in live on Facebook, YouTube on the replay. And there's my sound check. Microphone's working. So good morning, everybody. Uh, it is November 19th. Um, we are less than a week away from Thanksgiving. Really hard to believe that Thanksgiving is already here. Um, there's always a little confusion for Thanksgiving at the restaurant here. People think that we do our soup kitchen for Thanksgiving. We actually do our soup kitchen for Christmas. And that is um, Christmas Day. We do a soup kitchen. We provide no questions asked meals to any, anybody who asks for meals. We delivered meals to them. We do up to 550 to 750 meals every single Christmas. Uh, we've been doing this since 2000. Three, 2000, 2000, Christmas 2003 was our very first one. So uh, you know, if you want to get involved in volunteering, donate, that would be fantastic. So we, we even did it last year. Last year, more than ever, uh, the local community needed it. So that's it. Um, so it's about 9 o'clock. It's 9.01 a.m. I only have a couple minutes to get on here. I've been busy since 6 a.m. cooking and working and getting stuff done here in the office. Went to the gym already, got my run in. So I'm super productive this morning. But it's 9 a.m., and uh, I want to talk about a trend that we're noticing in restaurants lately. And all my restaurant tour friends are talking about this. Um, we're talking about it here at the restaurant. Um, and in fact, the Wall Street Journal had an article out. I believe it was in today or maybe yesterday, but there was an article that surfaced from the Wall Street Journal here. And I don't know if they wrote it themselves or if they just, you know, copy and paste from somewhere else. Um, you know, there's. All these journalists um, get their sources from from one one place and uh, literally copy and paste, um, especially when it comes to press releases. Uh, doing press releases years ago, I would have the same article. They wouldn't change a single word and put it in many, many papers. So uh, the Wall Street Journal had this, Wine.com, which I think is associated with the Wall Street Journal and some other restaurant, um, restaurant um, uh, publications, talking about the customer not always being right. Restaurants and hotels push back against the uptick in customer tantrums. So I know that we've noticed here, and so have a lot of my friends, that some customers lately, um, since the pandemic, are just irate, irate, upset. Um, they take their frustrations out. They let things bother them um, that maybe they shouldn't. Sometimes, yes, you know, things are... are um, don't go wrong in restaurants, of course. We rely on a lot of different, a lot of different moving parts in a restaurant. And um, and many of the people that are in the restaurant industry that are working it are not people that, uh, it's their career. They're they're in there while well, they're during, in college. Uh, they're in there to, to get them by from one job to another, to make extra money part-time. It's not like, you know, a pilot who flies a plane who that's his job and goes through the whole checklist and that's all he does for, for his whole life. So sometimes restaurants can be tricky to find the right staff. It takes a lot to have a great staff. We have a fantastic staff here at the restaurant. Um, but we do a lot, of, a lot of team building, a lot of training, lots and lots of team building. And uh, people keep asking us, like, what's your success in the restaurant industry to, to having a great staff? Uh, so that's it, you know, be their, be their life coach um, and not so much your boss. Of course, you have to be their boss, but you have to help them succeed with everything they do in life and, and encourage them and help them set goals and move forward. Uh, that's, that's the one key thing that helps us with our team members here. So um, if you're tuning in live, by the way, drop a comment, hashtag live. If it's on the replay, hashtag replay. So, but recently, recently, there's been lots of posts and forums and Facebook. Is the customer always right? And the answer used to be, customers always right. Customers always right. We were drilled that when we were at the culinary school and the hotels. Customers always right. And a lot of now, um, the attitude is shifting between the hospitality. I mean, a lot of people think that you know, customers just don't have the right to to be lunatics and carry on unnecessarily. Um, and I've noticed here in the restaurant, that there's certain people that I've had to put in their place uh, over the years. We've been here 18 years. I would say. Probably two or three times over the course of 18 years, I had to put somebody in their place. Since the pandemic, it's probably been double that, double that. And, you know, there's a combination here. Folks, 
we're tired in the restaurant industry. We don't have, the restaurant industry as a whole does not have enough staff. We're tired, we're exhausted. Many of us are overworked and, you know, and it's hard to buy ingredients. Like it is super hard to buy ingredients. And we're out of tuna, we've been out of tuna for four weeks, our tuna, we're gonna be out of our tuna for another three to four weeks. It's not gonna be back into stock. Um, I ordered stuff for Thanksgiving this week that didn't come in. It's on back order until December 2nd. December 2nd, Thanksgiving's long over. We're like, we're maneuvering things around. Um, you know, so if a guest comes in and goes, why don't you have, you know, this, this, and this, or that, you know, I'm sorry, we just don't have it. We, the world can't buy it right now, like plastic cups. Like, it's almost impossible for the world to buy plastic cups, just like it was toilet paper at one point. But a lot of guests come into restaurants, and and they really just carry on unnecessarily. And I hope this is not the trend going forward because a lot of restaurateurs are fed up with it and a lot of restaurateurs are saying something. A lot of restaurateurs are kicking people out of their restaurant. Um, so, you know, I've told people, certain people in the last, you know, two years, you know, how I really how I really feel about them and, you know, that they're not welcome here. And it feels good. It feels really good when you know that somebody's coming in and taking total advantage of you, abusing you, abusing your staff. And I've always stood up for my staff. I've always stood up for my staff. You know, if you're going to abuse my staff, I'm sorry, you can't do that. You can't do that. You know, if we screwed up, fine, we'll fix it. We'll fix it. We'll make better on it. We'll do good. We're not perfect. Um, give us the opportunity to fix it. But if you're going to come here unnecessarily abuse and bitch and be cranky and talk down to people, um, you know, um, we just don't have patience for that. And I think more and more restaurants are in that same boat. We just don't have the patience for it. Um, you know, for me, I'm happy that we can be open. I'm happy that I can get 85% of the ingredients that I'm trying, that I'm using. I'm happy that, that I have staff and team members that come here to work already. I'm happy. I mean, when this first thing happened, when the pandemic first hit, I was like, oh my gosh, like what's going to happen? I was like, sell everything we have in this place now. Like, let's turn all the inventory into into cash um, because we don't know what's happening, right? We didn't know if we were going to be open. We didn't know if we were an essential business. So we were we there was a lot of uncertainty, and we we're like, just like sell everything, like sell everything you possibly can. Turn that's when we started doing our grocery store because people were buying everything we possibly could sell, and it turned out really really great. But um, interesting read today. So if you Google tantrums, um, let's see, what do you have to Google to get this article? Wall Street Journal. Um, Wall Street Journal, you can't read the whole article because it's a membership. But on other sites, you can find it. Restaurants and hotels push back against the uptick in customer tantrums. So, you know, I myself as the owner, um, you know, I, I, tell my, I tell my team members, you know, you're not the one to get upset at, 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 at guests. You're not the one to do that. If there's a problem, an issue, you come to me and then I will take care of it. Um, we, don't give, we don't give our staff free reign um, to tell a guest not to come back. Um, that's my call as the manager. And I think that needs to be a very distinctive line in a lot of, um, a lot of restaurants where, the, where the, the, the staff isn't the ones that are doing that. That's, that's the manager's job. The manager's job is telling, is telling the guests that they're out of line. Years and years ago, somebody went off on Jamie during restaurant week, somebody cheap, and they didn't want to pay for all the bottles of water they ordered. They ordered bottles of water. You know, bottles of water at that time were like four bucks a bottle. I understand they ordered two or three. Why they got charged for every bottle of water they ordered? What was back then probably Pellegrino we had on the tables back way way then. Now we have Saratoga, and you know and the guy just was so upset and and talked rude to Jamie. And I simply walked out to him and I said, "Excuse me, sir." You know, Jamie came in, and told me, and Jamie was in tears. I said, "Excuse me, sir. I think you left your manners outside. I'm going to give you a chance to go outside to your car, get your manners, and walk back in here and be a civilized person." And the guy listened and did it. But, you know, but it's, it's a shame that you have to have these kind of conversations with people um, that just think they walk in the places and think they just can talk down to people. And it is, um, it's a shame. Ralph said it's breaking up. Ralph, if it's breaking up um, on your end, just rewind it, rewind it 10 seconds and then play and it'll work. Or just watch it on the replay and that typically ha that, that, that'll be perfectly fine. It's just the current bandwidth, um, you or me or, or a combination of the both of them. Um, uh, on that so yeah folks that's it i gotta get going i have to run out do some errands and get back and uh, get back into the kitchen and that so everybody thank you very much remember be kind when you go out to eat be kind when you go anywhere um the world is short staffed um the world is short stocked on food things are just sitting in places in limbo i went to order a walk-in freezer i was told 20 weeks the four main companies out there only two of them are taking orders because the other two companies feel they can't even fill the orders they have 
I'm getting ready to spend eighteen thousand dollars on a walk-in freezer, and I'm being told it's a twenty-week lead time because the insulation. They can't put insulation inside the coolers. They're short on insulation. So um, Karen says this very well. During these hard, difficult times, there are too many folks that think they are so privileged. A hundred percent, Karen. A lot of people think that they're privileged. And you know, you're privileged if you can. If if you pretty privileged if you can walk into a restaurant and sit down and order food. You're privileged if you can walk into a grocery store. Um, you know, you're blessed to be able to walk into a grocery store and have stuff on the shelves. You know, 10% of the world's population has to walk every day to get water. To get water, people have to walk. And we can walk into a grocery store and and pick up food, put it into a shopping cart. Who cares if we have to wait a half an hour in line or whatever it is? We are extremely fortunate to be able to do that because people, there's a lot of parts in the world that are not like that at all not like that at all there's a lot of third world countries out there just go there it's easy to find people that are in poverty people that are starving people that don't have you know we think our times are hard there's a lot of people that have always had hard times and um if you're if you're appreciative then this obviously isn't an issue if you're appreciative and and you you live your day with gratitude and appreciation but for me as a chef who works my butt off in a restaurant I am so happy to go to another restaurant and have people wait on me and serve me and cook for me. I'm grateful and happy that I can do that. I'm grateful and happy that I make enough money to do that. I'm grateful and happy that there's other restaurants out there that are open and that I can sit down and enjoy myself and take my mind off of my work. Um, so I'm extremely, extremely grateful to have that happen. And, um, you know, I think people just need to put things into perspective and hope go, go when you go out, be nice. Be nice or don't go out. That's the bottom line. Be nice or don't go out. And you know what happens a lot of times when you're when you're driving to a restaurant. You know, let's say you're out hiking here at Sam's Point. You've been hiking for three hours, and you know you hiked nine miles or eight miles or five miles or whatever. All of a sudden, you're hungry, right? You're hungry, and you're driving to a restaurant. Your blood sugars are off. You're already you're already a little agitated because your blood sugars are off and you're hungry. So you get there and you have to wait 15 minutes, you know, to get your food or 20 minutes to get your food, which seems like an eternity. That which then you're going to exaggerate and say it was 45 minutes before I got my food. And you know this place sucks and this place is overrated and this is that. Folks, you were able to walk into a restaurant and sit down and eat. Um, you sometimes we see this a lot. People walk in with their spouses, significant others, and they're fighting. They're both miserable. They're fighting, and I got to tell you. You, 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 they let that affect their whole evening with us, their whole experience with us. Where now all of a sudden it's our fault. You know, it's our fault. My staff has to be the brunt, the bearers of this brunt here and get a lower tip because they were the ones fighting. They weren't the ones enjoying themselves. Um, you know, just be happy. You're at a restaurant. You're at a restaurant. You know, if you were out walking, you know, three to five kilometers for your fresh water from the village to get back to your house. You know, that's a different story. You drove here in a car. You got out. You walked into a restaurant. You have money to pay for it. Just be happy. That's the bottom line. Just be happy. Be appreciative. Be grateful. Or don't go out and make other people miserable. All right, folks, got to get going. Um, wine dinner on Monday, four wines in a dish, $29. I have new wines coming in today, new wines that will be on that um, on that menu on Monday. Don't know the dish yet. Um, Albie's back December. We have to repost that on our website. Albie's back for live music on a Friday night. Uh, we're booking holiday parties right now. Got a few spots left. Got several holiday parties that are booked. We're not doing win a free holiday party this year. That's long thing, something from long from the past. We used to do a win a free holiday party. Not anymore, though. Um, we don't have many spots left. People are booking, so that's good. Uh, New Year's Eve, we're open uh, for takeout and for limited dining. Thanksgiving. We can probably sell about 25 more, 25 more to goes. We're doing a traditional th- 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 turkey get- dinner. Uh, you can either have brisket, turkey, or salmon. Thirty-five dollars includes all local stuff: local turkey, local corn, local um, potatoes, local um, butternut squash, uh, local cranberries, um, local sweet potatoes. All these local things. Beautiful local things from a lot of local farms um, on that plate. We just got organ- uh, local broccoli from a farm this week. Expensive, over 50 bucks a case, but beautiful, beautiful broccoli from a local farm. Um, so that's the broccoli we're serving this week. Still waiting for Romanesco to be in season. Um, oh, we have Panettone. We have Panettone directly from Italy. 
Panettone from Italy, from Verona. It's here. Our trusted um, importer, Sonia Toscano. Um, we've had to pre-order this. We have a couple cases here if you want some Panettone. $32 is the Panettone? How much is it? Four. $35. $35. How much is it on their website if they got it on their website? It's like $50, $45. So you get a savings. Um, same brand, Sonio Toscano, really good brand. Go to Sonio Toscano, S-O-G-N-O, Sonio Toscano, uh, T-O-S-C-A-N-O, Toscano, Toscano. Um, you'll see a lot of cool things. We can get everything on there at a significant discount for you. Um, you don't pay shipping. You just come here and pick it up. So their Panettone that's 42 or $45 is $35 here at the restaurant. Um, Prosecco Panettone from Verona, Italy. Uh, Panettone is an amazing, amazing uh, cake uh, that comes from Italy every year, this time of the year. Only northern Italy from the Verona area. Karen says, oh, Romanesco. Romanesco soon. I've ordered it a couple times, and it's been shorted on our orders uh, from Norwich Meadow Farms, certified organic from upstate. Uh, we've gotten shorted two, three times on that. All right, folks, that's it. Got to get going. Talk to everybody later.